everybody. So it is crazy, crazy hot outside. So I've decided to sit down at the easel for just a bit, do a little work here in the cooler uh, spot in the house <clears throat> instead of being outside. Now my other painting that I still have hidden from you, I'm not working on it at the moment because that part that I'm getting into is the harder part. And this piece right now, this part that I'm doing here is just very soothing to me. I really enjoy doing all these little tiny details on the trees and the skies, stuff like that. So I just kind of reworked this base. I don't know if you saw this before, but what I did is I brought, <clears throat> I've got some pink in the skies and I brought it down here in the snow plane. I still am working on a little um, driveway, but I haven't quite got there yet. I, I wiped out the driveway while I was working on the colors because I didn't really care for the angle of the driveway. So I'm just building out the tree right now, but all this crimson, all this darkness will go away. I will be lightening that up with lots of snow on there. And right now I'm just working with Payne's Gray, some white and a little bit of, oh, what color blue is that? <clears throat> it's one of my favorites. Where is it at? Prussian, Prussian blue. The pink is crimson. That's what I'm using, just a touch of crimson in the sky and snow always reflects the color of the sky. It's one of the beautiful things about snow. And one of the things I love painting snow because there's so much color in snow. Like, you know, when you get down to it, when you start painting it, you realize there's so much color. It's not a white painting. We use a lot of colors that <clears throat> kind of trick the eye into believing there's nothing but white. But even, I've even got the little villa here with a little bit of crimson in it, reflecting the snow. This takes quite a long time. All these little tiny details <clears throat> and that's just what I, I just enjoy it. So I thought, well, I'll sit down for a few minutes, take you guys along. So I had the basic shape of the tree and now I'm just working on giving it character. And at the moment I've got the edges of it pretty dark, but I will be laying snow on top of that, but that'll be a little bit later. Everything has to kind of dry. So dude, I hope the camera is up close enough. This is just about as close as I can get it. I'm still working on getting, you know, better angles. And then right here is where I want to put that heart. I've already kind of shaped it out there and I'm working in its space, but I'll come back to it and make it nice and clear where they'll have their initials. So once you lay some color on here, you can smooth it out so easily just by swiping your brush up and then it's all smooth. But I really want a lot of ridges on this because I want it to catch snow on those ridges. So I want it to 
have a lot of character. So that's why I'm bringing in mostly just the um, Payne's Gray at the moment. Once in a while I grab a little white and a little bit of the blue. And I'm trying to work with uh, some movement here. You know, trees are, they don't, some, there are some that grow straight up and down like the aspen trees, but they even have knots in them and character in their own way. But this is not that kind of a tree. It's a gnarly tree. At least in my head. So I'm creating ridges. Here, if you looked at a, let's say, an old cottonwood tree, it would be twisted and bumpy. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. When I do a tree, I usually lay out the base. That's what this is here, down here. And then I start building on top of that. That's just how I do it. Some people do it differently. Every once in a while, I add a little oil to my brush so that I can move the paint around a little better. Because after a while, sometimes it gets a little dry. It's really nice to sit down and paint again. My head is in the fall mode, even though it's crazy hot outside. I mean, I am a little worried about some of my trees because it's super hot. And there's really just not much we can do about it. This year, the aspen trees have done better. They um, aren't as burned up as they were last year, but they're getting burned up now. Those leaves are starting to get a little crunchy. And that's just from the hot sun sitting on them. Um, I did lose my little mimosa tree that I had transplanted. I don't really know why, to be honest. It started out well and then <clears throat> we just had a couple of really hot days and it just died so i'll have to start something new there i have a couple other mimosa trees growing in a couple other places so i'm thinking about they're real happy where they're at they just can't live there because they're too close to my cement wall and things like that so I'm thinking about pulling them out and putting them in pots in a shaded area until it gets cold enough for a good time to transplant trees. We'll see. They pop up all over because I have a neighbor who has a beautiful, huge mimosa tree. So they, they tend to pop up all over the place. They just never seem to pop up where they should live. <laughs> They're always somewhere. I have to pull them out. So I'm hoping to get this one to grow right in the middle of our backyard. Anyway, my brain is in the painting mode because it's already, like I can feel fall coming even though it's crazy hot right now. It's just something how there's just some subtle changes. And it's gonna stay crazy hot for another month at least, month and a half. But, you know, it's just kind of a subtle change. So my brain is more in this painting zone now. I'm really looking forward to winter at the moment. It's funny how that works. You know, at the end of the winter, you are just looking forward to getting your hands in that dirt, get some sunshine. And then towards the end of the summer, getting up tired and hot. <laughs> and things have hit their peak. And uh, you can kind of see the end of that coming. For me, I just think, oh, it'd be nice to cool off because that's just how I am. Other people aren't necessarily like that. So now we've got a few gnarly pieces there happening. And then I'll make it even more ridge-like as I 
start to lay some snow on top of that. And then I have a lot still to do up top here. I have a little more of the branches to come out. I'm gonna bring them out just about to there. And we're gonna bring this one right across there because we wanna, I'm framing, framing the top of it by doing that. And of course, we'll be laying snow on it, so it'll be much more faded than it is now. But I'm giving it the base for the snow now. The snow paintings are pretty much truly the thing I love. Love skies, snow paintings. I love the impressionistic painting. I guess I like a lot of things. <laughs> I can't just stick to one. This painting has been sitting around looking at me and so it feels really good to get a little more. And this is another one that when I get to a certain point, I won't share any video. And I don't think I've shared a video until now anyway. I think I had all this done. I just didn't share a video with it because I was focusing on video with the other one. So it's fun. I get to share this one with you now for a little while until we hit that point. And I like to keep, leave a, you know, a lighter spot in a few places mostly in the middle of the tree because of how the light might hit it and how the I really am obsessed with light but I suppose most artists are aren't they because it really affects the color so uh, whenever I'm looking at things when I'm out and about or I enjoy looking at amazing photographs of places I can't go um, I like to study how the light hits the trees in the, in the photo or mountains or whatever it may be. And then when I'm out and about, I like to study how the light hits this or that. In the mountains, uh, in this area, in any area that I've been around mountains, it's fascinating how you really never see the same color twice because the light hits those ridges differently every day. And you know, there's similar patterns, but it's really not the same. Right now I'm just working on the edge here. Sometimes I forget to do the edges of these, but I do like to include them sometimes. All right, well, that's about the, all the time I have to work on this today, so I'm gonna cover it, let it dry, and then I'll come back and do some more. See like right now when I go to set any white on there, it just kind of blurs. So we've got to let that dry out to bring the snow on top of that. And then I still have this part to do in the middle, but I'm really happy with it. I've really enjoyed working on this one. So I'm happy I get to bring you for just a few minutes anyway to see what we're doing and hopefully I can bring you again. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day out there. Stay cool. Bye.